lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. That's what we're out here to do, to lift up the name of Jesus. If there could be one thing that could be said here today, hallelujah, that could help you, it would be that as Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness, he put the brass serpent on the pole, that those that people that were bitten by the fiery serpents, because the, the, the children of Israel were transgressing, and everywhere you look in this generation now, you see transgression, you see sin, you see an iniquity. But in those days when they were bitten by them snakes, that they knew that it was a matter of time that they would die. And today, I'm here to tell you, if you're bitten by that snake of sin, if you're bitten by that snake of iniquity, if you're bound with a vice, if you've if you got addictions, if you've got a habit with pornography, if you got a habit with cursing, if you got a habit with stealing and hatred and envy, these are all the things that will keep you out of a heaven's door. Amen? Amen? See, in those days, when Moses lifted up that brass serpent on the pole, when the person that was bitten, if they would just look, that they would live. Today, if you could focus your eyes a little bit higher than man. You know, a lot of people go to church. And a lot of people have a religion. But I'm here to tell you, religion ain't going to help you. I'm here to tell you, a little bit of this and a little bit of that is not going to help you. You need a dose of Jesus. And in those days when they were bitten by that fiery serpent, like many of us were bitten by the sin serpent. And there's no escape. The only antidote that you got is Jesus Christ. See, the Bible said through one man's disobedience. That's the first man, Adam. Did you know Adam was made in the likeness of man and Adam was made a living soul? But in the garden, he sinned and he transgressed. I'm here to tell you that there is punishment for sin and there's punishment for transgression. And as Adam sold us out in the garden and he was made a living soul, the first man, Adam, but I'm here to tell you that the second man, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. That's Jesus Christ. Through one man's disobedience, many were made unrighteous. But through one man's obedience, that's Jesus to the cross, many of us, hallelujah, by faith, can receive him through grace and have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the gospel Amen. that I believe in. Yes. Romans 1.16 in the Bible says that the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. And neither is there salvation in any other. You say, well, I'm a good person. No. Praise God. We must be born again. The Bible says, marvel not. You must be born again. If you come in another way, the Bible says that you'll be a thief and that you'll be a robber. There is no other way in but the straight and narrow way. The Bible says, broad is the way that leads to destruction and narrow is the way that leads to life those people that were bitten by those fiery serpents there is no escape except they looked and they lived there is no escape out of this world you know i hope you haven't noticed praise god or, or take notice that 10 out of 10 people die sooner or later it's going to catch up to you you know underneath moses law the bible said Two or three witnesses would testify and you, you could die for the transgression of Moses' law. I'm here to tell you that still is the case today. If you don't make a full reproof and turn around, hallelujah, then the wages of sin is death because Adam sold us out in the garden. Yes, the he only did. escape is through the cross of Jesus. Amen. He did Amen. not shed his blood in vain. No. At the cross... Jesus battled every evil spirit that there was on planet earth. Praise God. Jesus knows your needs. Take upon him his yoke. His yoke is easy and his burden is light today. Anderson, South Carolina, if you could only receive a visitation from the Lord today. You know, we just came from Canada. We had to take a trip up there and I ended up uh, ministering at my mother's funeral. Praise God. You know, I never thought the day would come that I would have to minister at my own mother's funeral. But the day finally came, and there was a drastic accident in Canada. Hallelujah. 
uh, in a place called Gun, Alberta, and three people lost their lives in a house fire, and a dog was burnt up, and the house burnt to the ground. You see, I'm here to tell you today that your house will be burnt to the ground. Amen. This heaven and this earth is going to pass away. My Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot nor one tittle shall no wise fail from the law to all be fulfilled. I'm here to tell you this earth wasn't made to last forever. Make no mistake about it. Praise God that the vest, the heavens and the earth and the universe is going to be folded up like a vesture. All this is going to be done away with. Heaven and earth is going to be done away with. But Jesus said that my word. See, Jesus' word is power. Jesus' word is life. See, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. That's Moses' administration was the word, the law. See, there's an escape from death. That's if you receive Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John 3, 16, that whosoever believes in him shall never perish, but have everlasting life. You can have everlasting life through Jesus Christ. See, the wages of sin, you'll get what you deserve if you continue in the path that you're on. You don't have to do nothing to end up in hell, praise God, but you have to receive Jesus Christ to go to heaven. See, in the Bible there's a parable that somebody got in another way and he didn't receive a wedding garment. See, the Bible says we're all naked before his sight. You're not going to go to heaven in those garments that you got on. You're not going to go to heaven with those shoes you got on. Naked you came into this world, naked you're going to go out of this world. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. See, God formed man out of the dust that was in the garden and breathed into him the breath of life. We need the breath of life that Jesus said, my words are spirit and my words are life. Amen. The Bible says there's no other name given under heaven by which men might be saved. This is what I'm here to tell you. It's not of your own righteousness that's going to save you. It's not how good you're going to be. It's not quitting cigarettes that's going to save you. It's not quitting dope that's going to save you. It's only grace through faith in the blood. Praise God. Romans 10, 9 says... That how can you believe except the preacher is sent? And that's where our job is, is to bring you the word and bring the bread of life to you so you can eat his flesh and so you can drink his blood and have the same life that Jesus came to proclaim on planet earth. See, you say, well, Jesus is gone. I wish he would come back again. Yes, Jesus is gone, but Jesus is coming back a second time to judge the world. Praise God. See, he came as the lamb to the slaughter, but the second time around, he's coming back as the king of kings Amen. and he's Amen. coming back as the Lord of lords. Yes, he Tattooed is. to his side. His, his vesture dipped in blood on a white horse, praise God, with the armies that's in Hallelujah, heaven. amen. And no mistake about it, we're vastly approaching the time of the battle of Armageddon. This is yes. the time that we're in when the when men and, and uh, government people and people in high places, when they say peace, peace, no, there's not going to be no peace. The Bible says when they say peace, peace, then comes sudden destruction as a woman that's in travail shall it come upon them. As in the days of Noah, the Bible says, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. When people were lost in eating and drinking and the cares of this life. The Bible says in Luke 21, be careful that that day overtake you as a thief. See, Jesus is going to come back as a thief in the night. Not that it's going to be a secret, but he's going to catch you unaware. I pray that this will not catch you unaware. Prepare yourself like the five wise virgins did. Do not waste your time because the Bible says, redeem the time for the days are evil. We're in an evil day and an evil time where they're calling good evil and evil good. This is not a time for us to fall asleep on our watch. Matthews 24 and 43 says that if the good man of the house would have watched, he would not have suffered his house to be broken up or another scripture in the gospel says broken through. I'm here to tell you that the devil as a lion is going to seek to whom he may destroy. He's like a lion in the streets. 
You must be sober and vigilant, the Bible says, because your adversary, is, the devil, is as a roaring lion seeking to whom he may destroy. This is a time that we got to look a little higher than man. Your pastor can't save you. I can't save you. We're just conduits of the anointing and we're just conduits of the liquid gold of that anointed oil that can flow through. That's all we are. We're just messengers to bring you the message of life. Today, I preach unto you not condemnation, but I preach unto you life, that you can have life and that you can have life more abundantly. John 10.10 10 says that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Make no mistake about it that the avenger of blood is after you. Praise God. And our only escape is how should we escape if we neglect such great a salvation? See, this administration is of the Lord. The Bible said, great is the mystery of godliness. For God, Jesus, was manifested in the mortal flesh. Hallelujah. Seen on of angels and received up the glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is not some fairy book. Jesus that I'm preaching to you today. Jesus Christ is actually real. And he is the same yesterday today and forever he said i am the lord and i don't never change see we change our values change our standards change but the standard of the plummet line will never change jesus is going to jump the plummet line and we're going to be measured out of the books that's within the bible 66 books in the bible and it's an appointed this is an appointment that we're not going to miss the bible says it's appointed unto men to die then after this judgment praise God and I'm here to tell you how is he going to judge us not by what your grandmother told you not by what your preachers told you right. but by, by the word of God Amen. every word of God is pure the Bible says hallelujah the law is good the Bible says praise God we must be judged under the word of God that's the standard that's yeah. got to be lifted up. Hallelujah. The word of God must be preached. Hallelujah. Hear a little, there a little, line upon line, precept must be upon precept. Praise God. Man's, hallelujah, theology ain't going to help you. But Jesus' neology, getting down on your knees, is going to help you. Because the Bible said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion, or the church of the living God, hallelujah, there shall be deliverance. Joel the prophet prophesied that in the last days that he would pour out of his spirit upon young men and young women. And upon those days, they were going to prophesy, hallelujah. And speak in other tongues. Hallelujah. Mark 16 in the Bible. Says they shall speak in other tongues. And if they drink any deadly thing. They shall not harm them. And they shall lay hands on the sick. And the sick shall recover. This is the gospel that I believe in. Romans 1.16. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Not this other stuff where there's no salvation and no power. Praise God. Having a form of denying of godliness. But denying the power That's of right. God. Hallelujah. God is actually visiting his people again. Whosoever liveth and believeth in him shall never die. Believest thou this? I believe it. That's all you got to do to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Accept him in your heart today. Believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess him with your mouth. For with the mouth salvation and, and is, is confessed and in your heart that you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he was an exchange for a perpetuation of your sins. That means it should have been us that died, but it wasn't us. Hallelujah. It should have been Barabbas that died that day, but it wasn't Barabbas. Barabbas was a murderer. And that day that Jesus was crucified, he took the place of Barabbas. Hallelujah. And that prison door swung free and Barabbas was a free man. Hallelujah. That's us. See, we deserve the fires of hell. We deserve condemnation. Praise God. And we deserve, hallelujah, what we, see, the wages of sin is death. So we deserve what we get. The Bible says, whatsoever man believes in his heart, 
That's what's going to happen to him. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. We've got to come before the Lord with a pure heart. A right heart and a contrite spirit will God not turn away. He wants a contrite spirit and a right spirit amongst his people again. And he's cultivating that amongst us. First the blade, the Bible says, then the ear, and then yes. the full cord in the ear. Yes. Many years ago, I found myself in a graveyard high on LSD. Six double hits of LSD. I was lost in drug dealing. I was lost in sin and transgression. See, the Bible states that you're dead in sin and transgression. There's nothing you can do about it. The only thing you can do about it is fall and come boldly before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. If you can come boldly before the throne of grace and confess your sins today, hallelujah, this is salvation. And salvation can come to you and it can come to your whole family. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? The jailers, when God opened up the prison for Paul and Silas in jail, the jailers, hallelujah, it was, it was life for life. If you let your prisoner escape, the Romans would kill the, kill the person that let them escape. In other words, the guards would, it would be life for life. And God sent an earthquake and erupted that prison. And let the bonds and the irons that were on Paul and Silas fall off of them. And in sprang the guard, the jailer. Hallelujah. But he said, fear not. Hallelujah. That the, 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 They were still there. And he got saved. And not only did he get saved, his whole family got saved. This is salvation for the whole family. Praise God. This is salvation, soul, mind, and body deliverance for everyone. Amen. Hallelujah. What he's done for others. He can do for you with his arms wide open. Amen. He'll pardon your sin. He'll do away with all your iniquity. See, the, the law and that we got today set up in the magistrates of the court, they'll keep things on your record and they'll bring things up against you. But Jesus doesn't want to bring anything up against you. He wants to cast your sins and your iniquities as far as the east is to the west in the sea of forgetfulness. That's a pretty good deal, praise God, when we're worthy. If you, if you get out here and you disobey the speed, limit. If you get out here and you break the law and you go to court, the judge is going to judge you according to the evidence there and you're going to be found, if you're found guilty, you're going to receive a, a proportion of righteousness according to what you've done. It might be jail, it might be a fine. It's the same thing with the Lord. The Lord is a just God. And we're weighed in the balances. The scripture says the multitudes wall. and multitudes in the, in the valley, valley of decision. decision. It's time that we tip the scales in our favor. It's time that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb Amen. and the word of our testimony. Amen. Praise God. It's not enough just for you to believe in your brother's testimony or my testimony right. or your friend's testimony. Jesus done it for them. He can do it for you. Praise God. He can deliver and yet deliver and will continue to deliver. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace and to the king, we're not careful to answer, answer you in this matter, O king, but our God is able. Well, I'm here to tell you that my God is able. I'm Amen. here to tell you that my God is an awesome God. I'm here to tell you today in Anderson, South Carolina, that my God is a tremendous God. Can God? God absolutely can. It's not a time to put God in a box, praise God. You got to come outside the box. He's the one that Hallelujah. created the universe. He said, I am he and beside me is none else. Hallelujah. He's the beginning, the ending, the alpha of the me. Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. He lifts up his hands and he says, I am the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity. Praise God. He's coming back a second time to judge the world. Make no mistake about it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming back a second time. The Bible says when they say peace, peace, then comes sudden destruction. And he comes as a thief that's in the night. The Lord is coming back a second time without for, for without sin unto salvation. He's looking for a body of believers. He's looking for a body and a people to serve him in gladness and in honesty, integrity of the heart. Not a form of godliness, but Amen. reality. This is what That's we right. come to preach 
to you not formality but reality hallelujah not three songs and a prayer request praise God and a, a, a religious ritual hallelujah that's all just garbage and stinks in the nostrils of God God wants us to serve him hallelujah without fear and with love hallelujah and come before his presence with thanksgiving and enter into his courts and his gates praise him hallelujah